Electroluminescent wire. Um, now there's nothing new about electroluminescent wire, but this version has an interesting twist to it. Now, to understand electroluminescence, how this works, I'll do a wee sketch. The principle of electroluminescent material is you've got an electrode, and then you've got a what you might call a dielectric with particles of phosphor in it, and then another electrode. And it's, you know, one way to describe electroluminescent material would be to call it a uh, light emitting capacitor because to make it emit light, you have to apply AC uh, voltage across it, and usually quite a high voltage, usually around about 100 volts or so. And this is usually done by connecting it to a transformer output. And um, in the case of a uh, low voltage circuitry, all you'd do is maybe in the very simplest type of uh, controller for this, it'd be a, just a very simple single transistor oscillator uh, with a low voltage primary and the higher voltage secondary and just a, maybe a feedback winding too. In the case of um, the electroluminescent wire, the construction is a central conductive core, central wire, the layer of um, luminescent phosphor um, dielectric, an outer conductor, and then a plastic protection film. All these have plastic protection films on them because um, otherwise it's very easy to damage the uh, electroluminescent material. So they need a protective film against moisture. Now, one of the most common ways in the case of the electroluminescent wire to feed the outer conductor, so there's the middle conductor going connection, and they usually have just another connection coming out and it spirals round the outside of the material. But this is a different version. In this case, they've got that uh, same arrangement of the core down the middle, but they've actually got one really coarse wire, second one, and then a third wire wrapped round to create uh, three spirals. And I don't know if they did this originally uh, to make it easier to make and just common them all together and then discovered this afterwards accidentally that it produced an interesting effect. But um, I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to turn the light off because one of the biggest problems with electroluminescent material, you can hear it whistling that, it operates at quite low frequency, it operates at audible frequency, I'm just going to turn the light off. And you'll see that by powering each of the three wires that are wrapped around this sequentially, it basically makes it chase along the full length of the wire. And it's a nice effect. It's, it's, uh, it's not very bright, but it is a good visual effect. Um, it's certainly visible to the naked eye. But as I say, it's not something you'd want to... Um, it's not hugely bright, but a good effect. I'll just turn the light back on again. And then we'll take this to bits and see what's inside. I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess that there's going to be a weakness former, maybe either a self-oscillating circuit, um, and the way they have to switch the AC to each of these three channels, so I'm guessing it's going to be three triacs, tiny little triacs. Can't really think of any other component that would switch AC uh, conveniently. Well, I'll just disconnect this, it's easier. And maybe a chip on board, a little blob maybe, for controlling the chasing. When you, you also, um, when you press the button, it does, it goes from uh, being off to very high speed, and then it's about five different speed settings, and then it's off again, but it's very hard. Uh, when you press the button, it tends to skip. It doesn't seem to have good debouncing, and it's very hard to turn it back off. But, uh, oh, here we go. So there's the transformer. I'm guessing that's the main transistor that drives the transformer. Uh, there's a big clicky button. These are... Uh, Oh, it's quite hard to get out. The battery contacts are on the mounted directly onto the board. Oh, it's actually a little chip. One of those numberless chips. What's the bet? It's a PIC-12 again. Um, there's the three triac type components with three resistors feeding them. 
and then either this chip is also turning on, enabling this circuit, the self-resonant resonant circuit, or quite possibly the chip itself is actually providing the frequency that drives the, that transistor. It's really not a lot to it. The current that electroluminescent material takes is very, very low. Um, and it used to be in the bad old days, it was touted as the future of lighting and, you know, everybody's wallpaper will be made of electroluminescent material that will make the room glow, but it's got so many problems. It's, it's um, prone to moisture damage, it's got very high um, degradation of light intensity um, in, from, from new, um, it, the, the intensity will drop quite quickly. Um, and um, it's quite easy to damage as well if you overflex it too much. But um, that's uh, it's an interesting enough thing. I got this from a company, a uh, Chinese company called Sure Electronics. They do it in various colours. And it's not that expensive, but it really isn't bright at all. You can cut it to length as long as you uh, cap the end off um, with something suitably washproof. And there's a very good chance that if I had cut this in half, it would get a wee bit brighter because it, the there's no real regulation as such. Um, the, the voltage in this transform probably just shoot up a wee bit and make it brighter. But yeah, interesting enough material.